What's going on guys, Bengal again here, coming back at you with another episode of Lions Franchise. The start of Season 3 for Lions Franchise, and the offseason, in my opinion, was a successful one. If you missed the offseason, which I'm sure you didn't if you're watching this video, it was a big-time draft, but it was also a big free agency brought in JC Treader, who I think is going to be a really good option for us at center. We were just looking to upgrade the offensive line in general, and dollar for dollar, JC Treader was the best option for us, I think. And Frank Ragnow, who has guard experience, at least did so at Arkansas, is going to be playing guard for us now. He's fast enough to 73 speed. I think he's going to work out really, really well. And we focus on just one side of the line, Tyrell Crosby, Taylor Decker. I've complained about them before. Jonah Jackson might work in as well. He gets injured all the time, though. So maybe it would be better to start him. He gets injured. Tyrell Crosby comes in. But I'm really comfortable with our offensive line. Going to focus on running left. I think that's the big thing there. Uh, tight end, I'm, I'm comfortable with who we have here. I like the group. And then receivers kind of up in the air. But in free agency, we'd bring in Duran Payne as well. This was just to get a bona fide nose tackle for the position. And he's just such a big upgrade over Lee McNeil, who I do like, but I don't really like him as a starter. I think he's someone who's good in goal line. But we needed to take the next step. And I think upgrading over Lee McNeil was great for the team. Six foot three, 319 pound Deron Payne. He's only 26 years old, star development. And he's just a bona fide nose tackle with pass rush capability. I think he was just a great player, a great fit for the team, and somebody that we had to have. So I was really happy about that. Dorian Tompkins can now play a more natural three tech. Or depending on you know where he's in, it could be five tech as well, and over maybe even four I. But no, he's going to be more of a prototypical three four defensive end where he can actually show off the athleticism and the pass rush chops. He's got 83 power moves. I think they were being somewhat wasted at nose tackle. Deshaun Hand was great in that role. He's not forced to move over to nose tackle to accomplish what we wanted to. Still have decent backups: Ali McNeil, John Penis Eni, and. Levi Anzarike. And we really focused on guys like John Pinasini. We brought in BJ Dickerson. We brought in good old Dick Russell in Richard Russell. And in the draft, we also drafted a receiver later in the draft, Dick Owens. So, you know, we'll go over the draft class more before we get into the preseason. But I was very happy with free agency in general. Our first pick was Cameron Ford. 5'11", 180 out of Virginia Tech, and, and clearly there was a lot to like there. And, you know, it, it shows. This is what he's going to look like in wear number 28. This is my CB1 of the future, I think. 94 speed. Because of something that happened at the end of the offseason, where we watched the Hall of Fame thing for Jarrell Revis, for six weeks we get plus five to man. And I thought something else, but maybe it's just man coverage. But everybody on the team, or no, no, you know what, it's corners and safeties. So BJ Dickerson, who we drafted, he has it as well. Everybody has it, you know, and we'll show you more uh, what he looks like in a second. But I was just really happy with the selection of Cam Ford. We had to move up to get him, but I think it was, you know, certainly a worthwhile addition. We don't really have that type of speed at corner. Like Amani Warawarie, although he did get upgraded to Superstar X Factor, is 27. So he's already kind of on that regression. And while he has 91 speed, it's not terrible. It isn't quite to the level of like 94 speed. And Jeff Okuda is certainly not the fastest. He is upgraded to 92 speed, but you know, my point is a 94 speed guy that is only going to get upgraded. Like these guys got upgraded. They were like, I think Okuda might've been 89 or 90 to start. And then Amani Warawari was probably in the same area. Ford could end up getting 96, maybe even 97 speed by the time we're done. But I think, you know, over the short term, he's going to get up to 95, 96 speed while we're doing this franchise. So really happy about that. Of course, you know, we saw him at Virginia Tech and just looked like the best corner in the draft. And we had to make a move up for him. Of course, we did check the development trait in stream and in the video for Earl Nix in the corner out of Kansas State. Six foot three, ended up having superstar X Factor. We're hoping the same for Cameron Ford. I never spoil it for my own draft picks. It just ruins it for me. But he's going to wear the same 28 that he wore in college. Again, I'm really, really happy with this draft selection. I really can't tell you guys enough. I think 
bringing Cameron Ford to Ford Field in the Motor City is going to be a great move for our franchise. And it was absolutely worth trading Jared Goff and a future first round pick next year to move up in the draft, get a first round pick this year, number two overall, and a second that we used to end up taking BJ Dickerson. Again, it was certainly worth it in my opinion. That was that was a great move for us. And then we would go on to select Braxton Turner, a linebacker out of USF. It seemed like the chat wasn't overwhelmed with him, but for a pure linebacker, I think Braxton Turner absolutely fits the bill. 6'2", 244, and he has something that the rest of our team really, really lacked a season ago, which is speed. 89 speed, high tackle, high pursuit, hit power is decent. Now, we did look at another Patriot. The Patriots got Earl Nixon too, but I was going to take the linebacker in the second round, or at least I was really going to consider doing it. And he ended up being very, very good uh, in terms of development, at least. Josh Thomas, he was only a 71 overall, but his development trait, we did check. It is superstar. And he's got 92 speed. He's certainly worse than the linebacker we drafted right now in you know the whole package. But long term, he's probably going to end up being better. Just you don't know the development trait before you draft the player, obviously. So it, it's tough not knowing that and then taking, I guess, the wrong guy. But I, I'm really happy with the player that we got. Great speed, tackling pursuit. We just really lack a true presence with speed and tackling ability at linebacker. Alex Anzalone just wasn't quite it. Anthony Walker Jr. just wasn't quite it. He's still going to play a lot. But I think we got... You know, certainly a better option long term in 21 year old Braxton Turner. Really happy about that, of course. Um, you know, we have the whole angle of watching him at USF, and clearly he was a pretty good player there. The speed on full display, he's got 60 zone coverage, so he's going to be okay, but he's probably going to be someone that I use her more often than not and really take advantage of that elite speed. So that's going to happen there. He's only got 53 man, but good agility at 83. So he should be pretty good to use in space. So Braxton Turner, again, I know not everyone was stoked with it, but I'm I'm pretty excited with that pick. Took him in the first. And then we moved up, of course, in the draft for BJ Dickerson. This is what he's going to look like. He's going to wear number 31. Uh, Braxton Turner, by the way, is like baby Luke Keekley. That was my vision. I'm sure you guys can probably figure out who my vision was for BJ Dickerson if you really think hard about it. Like Sean Taylor was kind of like the the focus player. Obviously different builds, but you know, I, I you know, I gave him 31, Sean Taylor was 21, and what was his other number? Like 30, 36? Something something kind of weird. I think it was 36. Yeah, it was 36. But I'm giving him 31. I think it's a great safety number. I want this to be my sick safety of the future. And I also am really thinking about playing him as a sub linebacker. He's 5'11", 224. Like, he's a little bit short, but he's definitely big enough to play the position. The only problem is his block shedding is really low. So he's someone that, while I do want him to be in the box making plays in Rundy, he's better suited to be in coverage. And his cover skills are really good. 77 zone, and of course, with the plus 5 boost, 82 man right now. Hit power is not crazy, but the tackling is okay. Pursuit, play rec, decent but he's going to be hopefully a beast for us in the back end he does also have big hitter trait aggressive play ball and a high motor Derek davidson has big hitter but because of his somewhat low hit power he hasn't really i don't think he's ever forced to fumble for us we don't really see a ton of fumbles my safety certainly didn't force that many but bj dickerson we love him in coverage and we think he can be a versatile player for us that makes an impact makes a big difference in games and Tracy Walker, I feel like, was so bad. Getting a guy like B.J. Dickerson that we can just put in immediately without protection. He can play, you know, over the top, need be. <laughs> we, we're going to be fine out there. It's a big upgrade. We even got another safety in Richard Russell. We drafted a lot of safeties, but we didn't really have depth at the position. And sometimes you just got to go best player available. And we got a lot of guys that can help us on special teams as well, which I think you have to uh, think about. Dick Russell here, 
Richard Russell, 88 speed, 74 zone, but this is a guy that can really play in the box. 62 block shed is not super, super low for a safety. Good tackle, good hit power, good pursuit. Cover skills leave a bit to be desired, but they're really not too bad. Strip ball, high motor, doesn't have a big hitter trait, shockingly. But Richard Russell looks very, very good. And a lot of people didn't want me to take him, but I'm really happy that we did because even if he's not this great starter at safety, he doesn't have to be. He can be a really good backup or sub linebacker. Haven't exactly decided on the specialist yet, but he's already slated to go in there. He's a 74 overall at that spot. So yeah, again, I, I couldn't be happier with the way that the draft went. He's a number one overall sub linebacker for us. That's crazy. That is absolutely crazy, but I'm really not mad about it. And also, we drafted Brian Davis, another safety. We took him at the top of the second round. Really happy with him as well. He is 23, so he's a little bit older. But this is just a player that we had to take a chance on. 6'4", 200. Does have star or better development. He's really not good in coverage. 68 zone, 68 man, and that's playing up five. Does have high motor. Doesn't have big hitter trait either. But 90 speed at 6'4", with 84 hit power, 82 pursuit, great acceleration as well. 64 block shed. I think he could play like a sub linebacker type role as well sometimes. At least he's a great special teams option. Really excited about him as a player. We just upgraded the secondary in a huge way because we got Derek Davidson last year, but then boom. Davis, Dickerson, Russell, and Cameron Ford. Like that is a really, really great group, uh, great group of players. Again, I couldn't be happier. Cam Ford maybe he's going to start his B3. So we get to see him a little bit more in the preseason. But I'm just stoked with the secondary. I really am. Like, Brian Davis, I think, is the biggest wild card of all of this. Because what if he ends up having superstar development? Am I really going to let him sit on the bench? I don't know how I can. But what is his role going to be? He's not suited to play cornerback. So even in a slot role with his coverage, it's just not someone that I would trust out there at all. But you can see Brian Davis. I mean, the, the height's going to be crazy. We have to get a player like this on the field. But I don't want him to be exposed in coverage. So we're really just going to have to pick our spots. Rotate guys in and out. And just try to get the best players on the field at all times. You guys may have noticed my big focus in the offseason was add speed and get versatile guys that can do a number of different things. And I think we really, really uh, drafted that to a T. We really, really did. And maybe not with our first couple picks. Like Braxton, um, Braxton Turner is going to be an inside linebacker. That's just what he's going to be. Cam Ford is going to be a boundary corner. Maybe slot it first. But that's what he is. But between Brian Davis, BJ Dickerson, even, even though he's more suited for safety, but Richard Russell, Brian Davis, getting action at maybe linebacker, safety, nickel corner. And then we drafted a player, Eric Hudson out of Florida. This guy's supposed to be a speed rusher type, but he really isn't. He's 6'1", 227, and he's not an outside linebacker, really. He has 88 speed. The finesse moves at 68 is not anything crazy. His block shedding is only 67. So for a guy that is an actual linebacker to have very similar block shed to a 6'4", 200-pound safety, I really feel confident about putting Brian Davis in the box to play sub linebacker a lot and having decent success doing so, but it's not going to be every play. But Eric Hudson has 88 speed. He's only 227 pounds. Like he's not going to play edge for me. He's just not. His coverage is not terrible at 65. He's a really interesting player. 87 agility as well. Like we definitely have something here in terms of a player that can maybe play a lot of different roles for us. I'm not sure what they're going to be yet, but we got a bunch of players that will make an impact on special teams because speed kills. And when you can track down, you know, returners, I know I'm focusing on that a lot, but special teams, I think, is important. Maybe not so much in Madden, but in general, it really, really is. And just getting speed, getting players that can play a bunch of different roles, whether it's Eric Hudson who could play edge, off the ball, like inside linebacker, I, I think... I think it was definitely a really good pick in the back end as well. Also a guy with high motor. Seems like everyone has high motor in this game. I'm not really sure how rare it is, but 
you know, I was very happy to add these guys, and Anthony Walker probably isn't in the long-term plans. He might end up getting moved down a little bit. But if you look at the contracts here, he only has one year left. So you know, I might not want to play him all that much. Jamie Aldridge ended up having star or better development at right tackle. I took a shot at a player just because I was sick of Taylor Decker. And his pass blocking, pass block power, pass block finesse, all pretty good. Pass block finesse and power, pass block, I mean, they're all high 70s. Strength is good. The run block's just bad. Finesse, power, lead block, impact blocking, not so bad. But run block rating is bad. I don't know if we can develop that, but I think he's a good backup at the very least for a rookie. And then, of course, we got the storyline already. Richie Owens was kicked out of his previous school, ended up transferring to Tennessee. Big move to the SEC. But you know what? He's got normal development, but he still is pretty good. 95 speed, 93 acceleration, 80 catching, 87 catch and traffic is playing up to. Great short route running. Agility is good. Medium route running is pretty good. Change of direction is pretty good. To me, he isn't the same as Rashad Reese, who we moved to running back. This guy is more of a receiver, just based on his, his attributes and profile. I'm sure his overall at running back would be pretty good. But to me, he is a receiver. He's just not someone that's going to play anywhere else other than the slot for me. I have, I have big hopes for what he can become as a player. I really do. But I'm, I, I'm not sure how much playing time he's going to get out of the gate. I think Quintez Cephas is certainly going to be higher on the depth chart. But the fact that Richie Owens here has 95 speed, we got to find some way to get him the football. Like, absolutely have to. So the preseason is going to be really telling to see how much these guys are going to get involved in and what role. So this should be a really fun video. I know this has been a super long-winded start, but there's just a lot to say about these players. So let's go ahead and, and get into the gameplay action. You guys know the draft class. You know the players. And hopefully you like me, believe that these guys can really turn into something special. Let's start with weekly strategy against Buffalo. Also, that being said, we are not restarting the franchise. We're just not. Uh, the reason that we're not... Why is player health locked? Don't know why. But the reason... Let me just make sure injuries are on. Uh, the reason we're not restarting the franchise, we already have so many different guys in the league that you guys are aware of. It'd be way too time consuming to recreate every single player that's new in the league and put them on their correct teams so i don't think the scouting update changes enough to warrant restarting so when i do another madden franchise at some point during the year we're going to use the scouting update then but for this we already have the built-in everything there's no point in my opinion to change that so injuries on practice injuries on is it because they turn pro uh, progressive fatigue off you guys told me to turn this off so that teams I play do not look awful at the end of the year with all backups. So I'm going to keep that off. I was told to keep it off. We're going to keep it off. Also, I will show you the sliders that we're playing on for this season. Made some tweaks. And as you can see, these are the way things look. Uh, of course, subject to change. But uh, I don't want to make it easy for me at any point. So we want good competitive games. We want good teams to play well against us. And we don't we don't want things to be easy. I know you guys love to see the struggle. The CPU has 87 run blocking. And we'll see if that does anything this year. Um, and their fumbles. I think I'll turn that up to 60. I just need... I'll turn mine up to 62. Need more fumbles to happen. Just plain and simple. Yeah, like it, it sucks when you fumble. But also, that that's football. Guys with low carrying should fumble the ball more than they do. More than they have. So, ooh, focus players. That's right. Who do we want to have in the focus players? We have every slot unlocked. I mean, I'll tell you right away that Eric Hudson, I do not want to be in there. I want Brian Davis to be in there. Braxton Turner, I want to be in there. BJ Dickerson, Cameron Ford, Richard Russell, Richie Owens. Is there anyone else? Like, yeah, the other safety, but nah, I think we're good. You know, it's funny. You guys probably don't even feel it because I've been uploading the videos, but I record a lot of these in advance. 
So it really feels like it has been a super long break for me because I haven't played Lions franchise in a while. Like it's been weeks probably since I played a game. So it really does feel like a long break from seeing these guys, seeing my boys, really. So it, it's good to have them back. It's it's awesome to have the new rookies in here. I'm just super excited, man. That's all there is to it. I'm really excited. I think every time there's a rookie class, especially one I'm excited about, it kind of reinvigorates my love of the franchise as we'll do, we'll do elusive back for DeAndre Swift. Give me a plus one speed. That'd be sick. We don't get it. The plus ones to various running back abilities. That's fine. It just reinvigorates my my love to play the game. And it's not that I love to play Madden. Don't get me wrong. We do play the moment for preseason, of course. But it, it, uh, it feeds my love of the storylines and watching these guys develop. That's what I love about franchise. So it'd be nice if in the future, as we see Alex Soto... Highest rated quarterback on our team, although not the starter. He's going to get a real chance to play this preseason. He never really got one as a rookie. But yeah, I think you guys get my point. Uh, as we'll jump in here on third and five on defense. You see the rookies in the back end. BJ Dickerson, Cam Ford will be uh, in the nickel. As Richard Russell is our sub linebacker. As down goes Allen. Shed one, couldn't shed the other. It's Russ Clemens. And Romeo Aquara teaming up for the sack. And that's how you force a big punt. And we're going to jump in here. A lot of really good-looking players on this Buffalo Bills team. Look at that. They have two X-Factors. And is it four superstars? Let's run to the left. We paid money for a great left side of the line. And they really didn't run block at all. Wow. Okay, so the CPU has Richie Owens as our number one slot. That's going to change. I didn't change my depth chart before I started. Paul Garrison is the starter. Soto is the backup. Going to make sure everything's correct. I'll do this out of the game as well. So Rashad Reese is still going to be the slot receiver. I think that's the best spot for him is in the slot. Russ Clemens, rush right end, rush D tackle is exactly how we want it. If Deshaun Hand, is Deshaun Hand worse as a pass rusher than Deshaun Payne? De De Deshaun Payne. Deron Payne. Nah, he's probably better. I don't know if I want to switch that or not. We paid big money to Deron Payne. Braxton Turner's going to start at sub linebacker, but we're probably going to sub him in as well after he gets subbed out. I want to see Brian Davis a lot. Sign Kendall Sheffield. It'll be a, it'll be a fun it'll be a fun season. Soto's starting, but of course he's not going to be in on this next play. Paul Garrison's coming in because Soto should not be the starter. I know there's a lot of you that want Soto to be the starter, but Soto is not the starter. Paul Garrison's a starter. He outplayed Alex Soto in every single possibility, every single way. As we find Rashad Reese, the more things change, the more they stay the same. Rashad Reese just being a monster for us. And I have to get back to being at least serviceable at Madden. Because a lot of... I did, no way I hit triangle. There's no way I hit triangle. I had the, the crosser on the other side wide open. I swear I hit that. And I did a bullet too. So I guess I accidentally tapped that on my way to the other button. Unreal. Again, the more things change, the more they stay the same. Is it a blitz? This might be a blitz. It's not. I'm sacked. All right. I, I think they did send five maybe? They sent four. I don't know how they got in so fast. Again, we're back to old ways. Cameron Ford is on kick or on punt. Why do we have that? Why do we have him as a gunner? Like, I get he's super fast, but I'll, I mean, I guess, you know what? For a rookie, that that's okay. But now these second teamers are in. At least some of them. Romeo Aquara is still out there. Look at the safeties, though. I want some of these rookies to make some plays. Throw up my safeties, please. I dare you. Also, it's awesome to have safety depth. We usually don't. So it is really nice to see some of that. As they're going to throw at me in coverage. Brian Davis wasn't there. Yeah, I mean, I'm in man coverage on a receiver, and he just beat me. <laughs> That'll happen. It doesn't feel right to have Rashad Reese as a running back here in preseason. But here he is. 
It's just unfair. It's unfair. Nine yard rush for Reese. And there he is on, on a slant. That's Rashad Reese in a nutshell. Nine yard run and then a touchdown catch. He's a really, really fun player. I know he's uh, the favorite player of a lot of you guys, which I think is pretty cool. Hold on. Okay. A great moment, dude. Sub me in so I can do nothing. Defense needs help. All right. Red zone opportunity. Romeo Aquara is in. I mean, you see a lot of backups to Sean Cornell. Uh, Aline McNeil's in there. It's a run. Fill the lane. Braxton Turner couldn't make the tackle. But look who it is. Eric Hudson, the rookie out of Florida. Coming in from behind, wrapping up. Love to see that. Ooh. I mean, dude, look how big Brian Davis looks at free safety. 6'4 is massive. Run up the middle. Hey, there he is. Nice tackle. I say 6'4 is massive, and I'm 6'3, but I don't feel like I'm 6'3, because obviously, like you guys see, I'm pretty skinny. So I'm, you know, I'm nowhere near 200 pounds. But uh, 6'4 to me just sounds and looks so big. As they're thrown to the end zone, and Ifeatu Melifanwu is mossed, and he's doing push ups instantly. It's the rookie out of Florida, Tave on camp with the touchdown. Oh my goodness. See, that's why it's fun to do like the draft the way that I do. Because we get to learn all about all these random players that maybe we're going to see at some point. So we're going to find Richie Owens over the middle. That's Paul Garrison. Why are you in in the third quarter? I'm bringing in Alex Soto. Let's not be insane here. Soto in the game now. So is Rashad Reese. Again, that feels bad. Especially when I throw to him. That was like not the right throw to make. But you know what? Preseason, it's fourth and one. Said I failed the mission, but I mean, it's fourth down. You don't know that I failed it. Let's put Amon Ross St. Brown on a whip. Mm, that's really bad because then the Ian Thomas route makes no sense. Is he not triangle? Hold on. All right, whatever. We're going to run it. Open enough. Amon Ross St. Brown first down. It feels like season one thrown to him. He was not really featured in season two. I know a lot of you guys didn't like that. But, it, you know, just... Better players in front of him, unfortunately. Still could be awesome in real life. As Soto's going to sling it cross field to Rashad Reese. I'm going to take him out. He should not be in the game. He's, dude, he acts like he didn't have 1,300 receiving yards last year. He is playing against third stringers. Play action. Under pressure and complete. There's Richard Russell, the rookie out of Auburn, making the tackle. That brings us to the end of the third quarter. Ten minutes to play here in Detroit. Still see a lot of familiar faces out there. Let's get used to usering Braxton Turner. Blow up the run here. It's a nice tackle, but it's going to fall forward for a lot of yards. I'm just, I'm just exposed. It's so tough to cover a running back out of the backfield. Like, it's insane. Ooh, Eric Hudson in off the ball. See, that's what I'm saying. He can play a number of different roles for us. Third and four. They're going deep. Adife Melifonwu. That ball is incomplete. Had a little bit of help from the rookie, Brian Davis. There's an injury as well. But that one, that was close to being caught. Richie Owens back to return. Show me what you can do. All right, Richie. No effort. What a scoundrel. That's my biggest concern with drafting him. How is he going to affect the locker room culture? Why are they in three deep right now? This, make no, this makes no sense. Check down to Ian Thomas. Oh, broken tackle. There we go, Ian. Alex Soto starting out strong. Six of eight. 64 yards passing. No interceptions. It's okay. I got to get better at RPOs. I recognize the RPO. Just hand the ball off. And there's a flag. Great. Clifford's got to be better at going through people. What's the point of being a high truck player? Face mask. Some extra yards that way, I guess. But what's the point of being a high trucking rating player if you don't truck anybody? Quick throw on the whip. It's Richie Owens. He's in bounds as well. Okay. As you guys remember, our team completely revolves around the quick game. That's where we find our success. So, we're going to check down. That's what this team's successful. 
at doing. And that's why I think we were unsuccessful before as we are just, I mean, sacked instantly. Did they rush five? They must have, right? No, they rushed four. I need to see what happened. I need to see what happened. Taylor, is that Taylor Decker? Is that the rookie? Frank Ragnow's in it right tackle? Why is that a thing? There's no way he's the backup right tackle. I can believe in not having a lot of offensive line depth. That's on me. But I don't know why he would play right tackle. Okay, that's insane. Second and 19. Quick throw outside. Yeah, Richie Owen's not doing much there. Not that he was in a great position to. I still can't get over this offensive line. Frank Ragnow's playing right tackle. It's not ideal. We're going to throw deep. Owens. End zone. Intercept that out of bounds. It's a good looking punt. It's a good looking punt. Put him right on the five. As you guys know, most of our rookies are on defense. So I am... Oh, look at Braxton Turner sifting through the garbage. That's a sick tackle. Just kind of got by three would-be blockers, or at least two, and made the tackle. That's really, really nice. But as you guys know, a lot of our big rookies are on defense, so I'm loving to see the defense play. I'm loving that. It's a decent enough tackle. That's Cam Ford. Love to see the number two overall pick, cover corner, not shy away from making a tackle in preseason. As he allows a catch there. A little out of position would be saying the least on that. But to be fair to him, he was in a deep zone. So that's, he's not really playing that. That's zone coverage. He's, you know, okay with giving up something underneath. That's what you do when you play like a cover four. Like you're okay with giving stuff up underneath. You're playing cover four to defend the deep part of the field. Like, you'll let him dink and dunk a little bit. Turner, big hit! Tackle for loss for Braxton Turner. I'm telling you, everyone's hating on the pick. He's going to be a really good player for us, I think. So, I could not be happier with it. Third and eight. In man coverage. We're going to see if this team can hang. And they could not. Cam Ford beat by a tight end. That can't happen. That can't happen. It's Kahali Waring. Completely forgot he was a player. He was a player I looked at, did tape study of when he was in college. And um, he was decent. Big athlete as Levi Anzarike gets the sack there. Texans drafted him, I believe, out of San Diego State. Unless I'm remembering incorrectly. Yep, San Diego State. He was, he was decent. He wouldn't be someone I'd be surprised to see, like, actually have a good year in a, a year or two. He's getting more opportunities. Richard Russell went in there and missed. Cam Ford couldn't wrap up. Zach Moss playing in the fourth quarter of a preseason game. Does uh, fairly well there. Oh, it's a screen! Romeo, oh, that's actually Julian Okwara. He shouldn't be in. I mean, I guess he should be. He's a backup. Let's, let's not act like Julian Okwara is a uh, is someone that shouldn't be seeing the field in preseason. Like, he's at, at the very highest second on the depth chart. See what Solomon Clifford can do. I always look for contact, and it, it just never works out. But he's not fast enough to do anything else for me. I don't know. Solomon, I mean, he was a, a mid to late round running back. It's okay to expect him not to be great. But I want... I want greatness. I expect greatness. and He's just, you know, certainly a little lackluster. It's nearly an interception. Just expected him to be open. Guys got bumped, and uh, that's the nature of how that goes. Third and nine. I think that's open. Little lob up in there, and it's Richie Owens. Put a lot of air under that one. Probably should have touched past it. I, I tapped it for way too short. We'll take that. 14-14. We're not playing for overtime. Let's get a big drive going. A little check down. There's Solomon Clifford. It's a good catch for a power back. We throw that? Ooh, that was a dangerous throw. 
They have a superstar X Factor and a superstar in. We're going to run the ball anyway. Look at Solomon Clifford. Oh, they're going for the football. That's why. Call a timeout. Dude, Richie Owens is fast. Like, I know 95 speed, you expect that. 95 speed's pretty fast. But, like, he really exploded off the snap there, which is nice. That's nice. He doesn't have good deep route running. But he's really good short route running, so we can just maybe throw the ball quickly. Use him that way. Where are we going with the football here? I think that's open. Wide open, Akeem Butler. Big first down. Play action. I mean, we're getting crazy even considering throwing the ball. Thank God these guys suck or else I mean, they'd be intercepted or interceptions. But it's preseason. I don't care about the record. I'm not really trying to win the game. I'm trying to see players make plays. Play action. We had it. We had it. Couldn't get the ball out quickly enough. Third and ten. Nine seconds. Still throwing. Soto, slinging it. That's intercepted. Yeah, I mean, that's that's his game. But also, again, I I can't stress this enough. I don't care about a preseason record. I just don't. Turner, dang. Tracy Walker in couldn't make the tackle. He's bad. I'm very cool with the preseason tie. I, I really am. Uh, look at Paul Garrison playing way too much and being way too good. Hell yeah, Paul. Rushing. Solomon Clifford got the bulk of the touches. No one was really that effective running the ball for either team, really. Zach Moss, actually, he was good. Receiving. Richie Owens, 8 for 88. Rashad Reese, two touchdowns. Tavon Camp had two touchdowns. One of the best receivers in this past draft class. And then defensively, let's, let's see our team. I don't really care about tackles. Two tackles for loss for Braxton Turner. See the list in here. Russ Clemens in there. One and a half sacks for Oquara. Romeo Oquara, I should say. One for Levi Anzarike. Half a sack for Russ Clemens. No picks. Want to see some picks. No forced fumbles. All right. It's, you know, a pedestrian start. Ooh, player meeting improve rookie. As we're facing the Patriots with Earl Nixon and the linebacker. That's a fun matchup. Who needs to be improved? We took Panay Sewell in the first round thinking he would be a big piece up front for years. He's a little raw. Okay, he's not, he's like a third year player. Um, hoping you could help him out. Yeah, sure. Pass blocking, gotta be the move for Panay Sewell. He's not really a rookie. And let's do finesse for him. We, we like that. Neutralize those speed rush moves. He gets plus three pass block finesse. Okay, like, he's not a rookie. I'm not really sure if that makes him a better player. I was just thinking about his skill set. I know he's a big, powerful guy, but making him more of a finesse pass blocker could be good. I mean, he already had good pass block finesse. I would have done power had I known that. And in my head, he's a better run blocker than a pass blocker. I would have upgraded run block had I known. That's just things that happen. Just going to keep weekly strategy the same. It's preseason. Stuff really doesn't matter all that much. And I think I like I like who my focus players are. Like, we still could be doing, and I still might even change and do this, uh, but we still could be doing, um, like, Derek Davidson, Rashad Reese. Those could certainly be things we do. But for right now, I'm not. For right now, I'm just going to keep things as they are. High ankle sprain for Jerry Jacobs. You guys remember Jerry Jacobs? I don't either. I barely remembered his first name. Back strain for Quintez Cephas. That's pretty bad for his playtime. And a dislocated shoulder for the rookie right tackle Aldridge, who we drafted this year, obviously. So that's uh, unfortunate. This is their time to get upgraded. And upgrades for kicker Tyler Bass. Power is always going to be my number one on this. He's got 98 kick power. Never mind. Get accuracy up. Hopefully we actually get accuracy. We will this time. There we go. And then Paul Green in the Paul class. This was the Richard or Dick class with BJ Dickerson, Dick Russell, Dick Owens. The previous class was the Paul class. Paul Garrison, Paul Green. And 
I don't know. Blocking, I'm down. Be as boring as possible, but block people. I am in. And this is a fun Patriots team we get to play because we get to see Josh Thomas, who we passed on, who has superstar dev. And we get to see Earl Nixon, who we passed on to trade up for Cameron Ford, who has superstar X Factor. So the Patriots don't know this, I guess, at this time. Hey, Braxton Turner with the interception. Did you see that pop up on the screen? Braxton Turner, the rookie with the interception of Mac Jones. Paul Garrison will play the first quarter. To throw a pretty good ball for Chris Godwin, who makes a nice catch on the sideline. Windows do not get a whole lot tighter than that. And tell me we can actually run behind this left side. Ragnow, Sewell. Give me some good blocks. You know what? They did their job sealing. We just, uh, tight end didn't. Running left. Oh, DeAndre Swift, the broken tackle from Chase Winovich, but barely gets a yard, if, if that. It's third and four. Ooh. Richie Owens on the field. That's usually where Quintess Cephas would be. And they're in off coverage. They're inviting us. Ah, it's bad for me. Got to get rid of the ball earlier on slants. All right. They were inviting us to go short. I just held the ball for too long. Now that we have 45 pass block slider, got to get the football out earlier. So we know that it's going to make it a fun and exciting challenge. This series is not supposed to be watch me beat up on the CPU. It's not supposed to be easy. Big third down, make a stop. I'm in. Sarder's still in here, by the way. You know, make a play. Oh, that's so open. Whose fault was that? He stepped out at the one. Can I see what play that was? Because I was led to believe we were in man coverage. We had... We had four defenders defending four routes in man coverage. The running back was on a delay, but no one should have been taking him. He was in the chip anyway. Oh, that's what happened. These two players bumped. BJ Dickerson and Amani Urawarie. Rookie versus a veteran. Little miscommunication there. They bump into each other and easy touchdown. That's tough. I think Amani Urawarie is probably all over that if he gets the opportunity to. But now we just need to make a play on the goal line. Get Braxton Turner. Make a stop. Oh, huge tackle, Anthony Walker. Are you kidding me? What a tackle. What a play. The strength to make that tackle is actually unbelievable. And that gives us a chance here on second and goal. Let's see if they run it again. They will. Fill the lane. Cut back. Touchdown. Tough spot. Good score by New England. Rashad Reese returning kicks. That's one thing I wanted to change as well, is put Richie Owens on kick return. It's a good thing to remember. Because that these are going to be things I want to remember when we actually start the season. Like, Rashad Reese is obviously cool to have back there. But he's, I would say, too prized a possession at this point to have him get injured on freaking kickoff, you know? And find a Chris Godwin for the first. It's a little three-minute drill for Paul Garrison in the offense. First team's going to stay on the field for a little while, it seems. Second half, maybe, for the backups. I really don't... You know what? Let me change this. They're playing off coverage. Let's put... Can I just... I can put him on a... Yeah, I can put him on a comeback. Let's see if he wins. We're going to get sacked here. I saw it instantly. But there's nothing you can do in that spot other than get sacked or get sacked. Those are the two options. Screen is shaking something fierce. Second and 17. Let's flip this to get Hawk towards the short side of the field. And then we can utilize Owen's speed. Get him in space. Took a huge shot there. That's okay. Makes third down a little bit more manageable. I don't know where I'm trying to go here. Just see what happens. Looking at the right side more than likely. And we're going to run with Garrison. Man, Winovich took a great angle, but he doesn't finish the play. 
Little spin move, and I think it's a first down. Getting a little bit dangerous in the preseason with Paul Garrison. But that's okay. We needed the first down. Little drag. Owens catches up to it. Nice little spin move. That was a little weird, but okay. We're going to throw that. That's such sick coverage. Who is that? That can't be Earl Nixon. There's our draft class, of course. Who's number 23 for them? How do I not know? 23. I mean, it could be only like J.C. Jackson, Stefan Gilmore. I don't think Stefan Gilmore was 23, though, does he? Where's 24? Kyle Duggar? No way Kyle Duggar was covering that. I just see the number wrong? Oh, my God. Kyle Duggar? Was that Superstar X Factor? No, it's just Superstar. Kyle Duggar covered that extremely well. Too well, I think. Third and three. We ran... You know why? Because it's four down territory. We'll take a shorter one. Preseason, everything's four down territory. Pretty much. We're going to make that... Yeah, we're going to make that corner make a decision. Safety on Rashad Reese. Man, I guess we can't throw that. Give me a pick six. I really thought we'd be able to. Huh, all right. That's good information to learn in the preseason. Can't do that. For future reference, I think we'd be better off slanting Chris Godwin in that spot. Although, like, the throw window for the slant and the inside part of the whip or zig would be convoluted. So, I don't know. The preseason's all about trying stuff out, so I don't make any of these stupid mistakes in the actual games. But I will say, just from preseason so far, doesn't feel like season three is going to be a whole lot easier than than season two. Touchdown, Dietrich Wise. Don't have a lot of time with 45 pass block. Don't have a lot of time. We're not getting any moments. Dude, I'm just trying to play a little bit. Give me a moment every so often. How about third down? Let me play. Alex Soto's into the game. It's not really a great route by St. Brown, but he caught it anyway. Amon Ross St. Brown, Cooks, Cooks. Earl Nixon in pursuit. Can't catch him. Touchdown, Amon Ross St. Brown. Let me play a little bit. As I threw a covered corner route that we just got anyway. Let's take it. Run up the middle. Tracy Walker, big hit. Where's my help? Turner. Nice tackle, Braxton. Patriots got a yard, baby. We're not out of this game yet. Really? As Sutton, the QB, looks so much like Alex Soto, it's crazy. Gonna throw sideline on Kendall Sheffield complete. That'll probably be the game. Just couldn't get there with Julian O'Quara. I was blitzing and I noticed it and I came off to cover it, but, you know, it was never going to get there. That's a wide open run. Ford can't wrap up. Russell pushes him out of bounds. This Bill Williamson goes down. Got out Red Dead Redemption. No idea what his first name would be. I think it's a made up player is why. First and ten. Patriots knocking on the door here. A lot of time. A lot of time. Time's running out, though. Sutton goes down as Levi Anzarike. Quick throw. Anzalone's torch. Touchdown. We cannot play man coverage with some personnel. That much is obvious. That I don't even know why that icon's not showing up. Is that because of momentum? That I can't th see what button I need to throw to? That's great. Nice little screen here. Just completely didn't work. We actually got a block on it. I mean, it, it, blocking doesn't work at all because the offensive linemen have eyes in the back of their head. What they should do is just go block somebody like how a screen works up the field. Find work. And I can be the vision and figure out where to actually go with the football. There's Rashad Reese. Just a beast. 
I feel like these corner routes never get open. Like, same result as before with Amon Ross St. Brown. He's so sick of doing that. But uh, they never get open against any coverage, I feel. They don't beat man. Maybe against cover two they work. But, I mean, I feel like it's very few and far between you actually see positive results. Third and two, we're going to do a jet touch pass to Amon Ross St. Brown. Get him involved. They still got Chase Winovich in in a preseason game where they're up 28 to seven in the fourth quarter. That play didn't work at all. I think I just needed to continue it. Sometimes I try to cut it up the middle for guaranteed yardage, but it never is. Soto gets sacked. Make a tackle. All right, I mean, the Patriots are just running the ball down our throat right now. So, I mean, that's expected. Let's get on a safety, see if Braxton Turner can make a play himself and run D. He just run up there and try to make a tackle too at the line. Or we can do that. Jashawn Cornell, nice play. That should be the end of the game. We're not going to bother calling timeouts. Offense definitely struggled in there. Paul Garrison threw an interception. Was that me? Oh, that was me. That was me. Um, running, we didn't really run the ball a lot. Like the only player we really have to try out is Solomon Clifford. We know about him. He's not good. So that is what it is. Amon Ross St. Brown had a big game. He had a 50-yard run after the catch. How long was that? 71 yards? Yeah, big play there. We know a lot about the receivers. Just still trying to see what Richie Owens brings to the table. And then defensively, Richard Russell had nine tackles. Tackles for loss. We have two for Anzalone, two for Cornell. Like that Duran Payne even getting one. Sacks for Anzalone, Anzarike, and Clemens. An interception, of course, for the rookie at a USF, Braxton Turner. Also to pass deflection, too. That's nice. Ooh, improve rookie. This is about Panay Sewell. All right, what happens now? Do you get XP for helping him? He's just going to continue to help him? I don't really know much about that. <laughs> Final preseason game is week three against Jacksonville, though. A lot of players back from injury, including Quintess Cephas, Jerry Jacobs, and Jamie Allridge. We have a lot of things here. Improved rookies. This is about Panay Sewell again, who's not a rookie, notably. He's been working with Panay Sewell. You think we got a good one? Oh, really? You think the superstar left tackle who's an 80 overall it could be good? I like what you're saying. He's got 4,500 XP. Helpful. Camp standout. Who's that? Russ Clemens had a strong camp and continued to build on that this preseason. Where does he improve most? I mean, play Rex overall. Tackling is tackling. We might as well do tackling. Give me plus five tackle. Plus five tackling. I'll take that. That makes him a lot better of a player, even if the overall doesn't change a ton. And then Tyrell Williams, did you see? No, not Amon Ross St. Brown. Getting open is going to be big for him. Is there any way you can make him faster? Can I say that? Medium routes? All right, sure. Sure. Plus two to release. Plus two to medium route running. I don't know how much Amon Ross St. Brown's ever going to feature. I'm, I'll be very forthcoming about that. I just don't. But weekly strategy, we're keeping things the same. Just hoping guys don't get injured. Here we go. Tell me nobody's injured. Thank you. And then defensively, dislocated wrist for Amani or a Warrior. Hopefully that clears up in the next couple weeks because that's not great. Number one corner, Panay Sewell has an upgrade. I think that 4,500 XP helped quite a bit. And I want his run blocking to be in the 80s too. But let's do the scheme fit. Get him up to agile. He's up to an 82 overall. Strength plus three, that feels huge. That feels like a major, major, major boost up to a 95. Although pass block and run block were not affected. All right, last game of play the moments against Jacksonville, my franchise last year. It was Jags franchise to start. This is kind of like a nice little throwback as we go into Jacksonville, where head coach Gene Dangus used to call home. Garrison in the game. Let's run the ball to Rashad Reese, who honestly plays more running back than DeAndre Swift at this point, which I'm okay with. 
If I said, I, th I think I said DeAndre Swift. Did I say he plays more than Rashad Reese? I feel like I may have said that. Tyrell Williams first down. Obviously, that's not what I meant if I did. I'm not sure if I did or not. You will know as soon as I do, really. Maybe even before. <laughs> Quick throw. Flat. It's Richie Owens. Mid-round pick out of Tennessee by way of Minnesota. Richie Owens gets his first NFL touchdown. All right, Richie. He's a speed to be a difference maker. Just, you know, when he ends up playing is going to be the big thing there. But he will get his chance. I don't really want to run against this front. Too many down linemen. I mean, we, we actually had that throw to Tyrell Williams. I know for the future that I can actually hit that. Richie Owens in game now. I'm probably going to bomb it either way. Garrison for Owens. That was traded so beautifully, but it's Richie Owens! Pass Jordan Poyer, touchdown! That was traded off so beautifully by the deep corner. Yeah, even Richie Owens knows he made a great effort. Great attempt at it. But he switched awesomely. Great hip flip. Doesn't matter. Richie Owens caught it. And he's just too fast. Got up to almost 22 miles per hour. Dude can absolutely fly. And now we, we need to see this defense make a play or two. Richard Russell might play a lot as a rookie. But we'll have to see. Nice play. Surprised it wasn't a fumble. Romeo Aquara off the back end. He has an interception. Who caught the interception? That's something I want to know for sure. We'll jump in on third and four. Garrison stays in the game. Interesting group of receivers. That's just got to be a quick throw there, Reese. Dropped it. Oh, Rashad. You're the guy I trust. Okay. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna play the moment. We're gonna go for this. We're gonna come out in the same offense. Five wide. Bunch right. Little three by two and see what we can do. Open over the middle. Hawk first down. Preseason, we go for it. Gotta see what the offense can do. We know what the field goal kicker can do. All right, we know what the kicker can do. We'll run for Rashad Reese. Hit right trigger too early. Third and seven. Hopefully somebody makes a play. Gotta be it. TJ Hawkinson, touchdown. Like that. Like that a lot. We'll take the TD. Playing a lot better against Jacksonville, at least offensively, than we were against teams like New England. We always struggle against New England, though. First and 10. Down in the second quarter, this group of first-teamers is still out here. We're going to throw Richie Owens. Toe drag swag. First down inside the five. Down at the one-yard line. They're going to challenge. Yeah, I think he got the feet down. Yeah, he did. That's a bad challenge. I guess they really don't have anything to lose. But, I mean, if we can trust him like that to make those plays, that's going to be great for us. DeAndre Swift can't get anything. That's why I don't run on short. Like, third and short, fourth and short. Just don't trust it. We'll try it again here. Like, sometimes it works out. There you go. Touchdown, DeAndre Swift. But I, I don't trust it. Back on offense. We've been on offense the entire game. Paul Garrison putting up some crazy numbers. As we're finding... Oh, what a catch by Richie Owens! Maybe even force that ball in there a little bit. But that is a heck of a catch. Love to see it. Run the ball to DeAndre Swift here. I tated that. Sure, we could have bounced it outside for success maybe, but I didn't. I felt like Owens was so open. Picked off by now Panther. CJ Henderson in real life. Oh, Paul Garrison just got absolutely disheveled. Oh my goodness. He got leveled and disheveled. Disheveled, of course, in that context, meaning he got basically rearranged. Means like disorganized, as the Oxford Dictionary is so nice to let you know. Um, I'm saying his, his whole body got rearranged after the big hit. Hope that makes sense. Wasn't the word I was looking for at first, but we got to it. Looking for leveled and a D came out. I'm like, you know what? Disheveled works enough. Little check down. 
Rashad Reese. Look at that nice little spin. A little fake spin, half spin. Another look at our draft class. Richie Owens, of course, pick at the top of the third round. And he's played really well in this game. So I keep throwing the ball to him because I'm like, hey, rookie, go make some plays. Fight for playing time. And he's earning playing time. And he's wide open. Great feet. Stayed in bounds. Touchdown, Richie Owens. Having an unreal game here. Make a play. And you know what? He's made several. He's made several. Intercepted! I said that before we even had it. Easy reads. User pick. Easy reads. Uh, Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. Formerly the Philosopher's Stone. I know my Harry Potter trivia, okay? Uh, <laughs> whatever. But yeah, that's a... I don't know where to go with the ball. That's a, that's a nice little easy read there. User pick with the rookie out of Auburn, Richard Russell. Safety playing a little sub linebacker for us. And he's looking really good in that role. It's great to have speed there. We hit Solomon Clifford out of the backfield. Rashad Reese just should not be in the game right now. Oh, I'm getting heavy pressure. You just can't hold on to the ball. The thing is, if the deep route isn't open, I guess the play is over is what happens. What do we do there? It's such a tough spot. We're pretty much manned up here. So, it's going to be a tough spot. I whiffed with Davis. Oh, with his hit power. That's one of his highest attributes, his hit power. Came up looking to deliver a huge shot. And you know what? On a blitz, I could actually see him being pretty successful. He got the speed, got the size. And there he goes, forcing the fumble. The rookie out of Tennessee, Brian Davis, on the blitz, comes in, forces a fumble. Deshaun Cornell is injured. Two Hill's going to come in to replace him. But okay, that's what we want to see. We need to figure out ways to use a player like him. Big, tall, fast, strong. Got to find ways to get him on the field because his coverage skills are leaving a lot to be desired. But that's just awesome. Go out, make a play. Brian Davis. It doesn't have to be in coverage. He's not a cover guy. On a, on a safety blitz, Brian Davis is someone I clearly am going to want on the field. Do I trust Solomon Clifford on a run here? Probably should. Not a great front to run against. It is third and three. We see if Owens can take the top off the defense. Leave Thomas in the block. Reese in the block. And we're just going to throw it deep. Okay. I just, how, do, how do I block everybody and not have time? Ball's got to come out earlier, maybe. They rushed for it. That's unacceptable. Unacceptable. I can't leave in, like, five offensive linemen, a tight end, and a running back. That's blocking seven. They like max protect. And we still don't have time. I might move the pass blocking up to, like, 50. Just because that, that really frustrates me. Fet pressure. Why are you throwing at me? Brian Davis almost with the pick. What are they doing? Great tackle, Rich Russell. Only like, yeah, a little uh, read option. I'm telling you, I am airing it out deep. We've got Solomon Clifford in the block now. Probably can throw earlier. Let's just let's just thread the needle. Oh, that almost got there. I like the timing on that. That's definitely something I want to test more. I like the run on this one. Just because of the defense I'm looking at. It's, you know, it could have been worse, I guess. Uh, and we're fumbling. Jacksonville recovers. They're going to score a touchdown the rookie David Donald and he's gonna get sacked we'll take that play action just throw the ball earlier there's Owens there we go third and six I was super open but the yeah, safety or boundary corner shaded underneath so you know it was probably not the right guy comeback was open deep this is good information. We know what to look for. The thing is, like, 
for somebody like me that like one of my huge hobbies is doing tape study it's like but before every play i'm i'm looking at what shell that the defense is in you know if they're if they're too high or if they're showing like cover two cover four or man even straight up with two safeties over the top like we are right here or if there's single high cover three like i'm looking at that stuff i've never done it once in madden never done it even once so maybe i should do that more to really think about what they could be in because i mean cover three you're attacking like what seems and then like cover two deep middle cover four you know obviously well, there are some cover four beaters deep down the field but generally you're still probably looking like underneath and and seams you're gonna go deep here attack hey we only have a two-point lead we shut them down on the two-point conversion attempt that ball ducked up in the air good pressure eric hudson into the game still like my safeties back there but it's a uh, it's brian davis the other one's tracy walker I'm not in love with. Oh, Richard, you got to make that tackle. Richard Russell has to make that tackle. Didn't make it. They're going to kick a field goal in preseason. We're going to go straight losses in the preseason. Yeah, not that I really tried to win. But it, it is a little ugly. Although some of the best teams historically have gone winless in the preseason it's just for trying things out it's really all it is third and three hear me on the h back here a little run up the middle that's gonna be a touchdown i'm okay with that they're gonna take it what five point lead so we have 19 seconds two timeouts it's just a deep bomb to to richie owens and maybe we get maybe we Maybe we win the game. We need a touchdown. We're going to lose, but like, there's a chance. First and 10. Why does Richie Owens have a have an exclamation point? I'm going to throw on the run. Hit him in stride. I mean, that perfect sideline footwork. Nine seconds. We still need a touchdown. I mean, we can afford to go out. Like, to Cephas or, I don't know. We'll see. Let's just go quick. Thomas, five seconds. I don't know that we take a shot at the end zone here. It, we're going to be hard-pressed not to. Who do I think can make the catch? I think Amon Ross St. Brown can. I'm going to roll out left. Hit Owens or St. Brown. Actually, nah, we're just going to throw it. We'll take Richie Owens and the loss. Could have played for the win, but... Just hit the open, man. It's good practice. And, uh, yeah, we do lose. Not really upset about it, obviously. But if we start losing in the regular season, I am going to be upset. So whatever future me says, I do not want to lose. Paul Garrison lit up the Jags. Soto was not quite so good, but, you know, not, not bad. Rushing, DeAndre Swift was actually finally good. Rashad Reese, just on minimal carries, was better per carry. But Richie Owens had 10 for 215 and three touchdowns. That's just unreal. It's unreal. Third round draft pick. Just got open a lot, made some really tough catches. Cam Ford led us in tackles for loss. Two tackles for loss for Tompkins and Deshaun Hand. We did have two picks in this game. Jeff Okuda had the other one. Brian Davis with the sack. Fumble, really. Uh, sack for Okwara. Interceptions for Russell was user pick and then Okuda. With the CPU. Four fumbles. One for Brian Davis. We saw that. No recovery. Yeah, I think the guys that impressed me the most in this game were Richie Owens. Brian Davis obviously made a nice tackle. Braxton Turner played well in one of the previous games. Richard Russell made a nice play in this game. What is the injury? A warrior who... No way! Derek Davidson with a, with a foot fracture? Derek Davidson broke his foot and is out for eight weeks. That means Brian Davis, the rookie 
free safety, second round pick, will be starting week one. That is quite a twist. To end the preseason, we're going to cut eight players. And Andrew Soro is a, is a Lions franchise legend. He was terrible and he was always on the field. I'm probably going to straight up cut everyone it wants me to. Don't need any of these guys. I no longer have the value of Dan Chisena because we have a fast receiver. And Casey Tuhel just isn't good. So he'll be cut. And the last player, you know what? We're going to keep Andrew Soro. Jeez. <laughs> cut Michael Jackson. Amani Uruwarie will be back for week one. But Derek Davidson is a massive, massive loss for the team. I really cannot stress that enough. That is a huge, huge loss. And it's starting week one at a, at a, you know, in a bad way. It's a bad omen. Arguably our best defensive player is going to be out for a long time. I'm going to make him a captain. That's what we're going to do. Derek Davidson, we're going to stick the C on him. And uh, we're going to place him on IR as well. So that gives us an extra roster spot. I'm not sure that we're going to end up using it. But he is on IR. And he can't return from IR. IR is like three, four weeks. All right, so if it's going to be weird and, and like if IR is broken in this game and it doesn't let me bring him back when he's healthy, what I'll do is I'll just turn off injury. Pre-existing injury is already off and then he'll be back to go um, whenever his injury length is over. So I'll do that if it happens. So he's not going to miss the whole season. I promise you he's not going to miss the full season. But that's going to do it for the preseason. Hope you guys are excited for week one. We're facing Green Bay. They had a big offseason in free agency, signing a lot of really good players. Their draft was lackluster. But we have a, a bunch of good rookies. And of course, Brian Davis will have to start right away. Not something I was ready for. He's not good in coverage. But it's what's going to happen. Cameron Ford will be CB2 over Jeff Okuda for now. And I'm excited, man. Watch out for week one coming to a channel near you soon. It's this channel. See you in the next one. Take it easy.